Tupelo, Mississippi. Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here. It is a cool, crisp Mississippi morning. That's right, I have crossed over another state line and I am in the town, the little teeny town that I was born in. It's my second channel, daily vlog channel. It's the Daily Woo. And I'm not the only person who was born here. A gentleman by the name of Elvis Aaron Presley also got his start in Tupelo. This statue is a recreation of a photo of when he returned to town to play a concert. September 26, 1956, the king of rock and roll stood right there. I love me tender, love me true, all my dreams fulfilled. Oh Elvis, I love you. Check out this rarity, soda machines for 50 cents a can. What year is this? 1993? Did you ever think you'd see the day where you could buy a soda? Two for a dollar? Never. There's an arrow pointing to the right saying Tupelo, the first TVA city. There is a little general store here in town by the name of Tupelo Hardware Company. And right inside those doors, a young Elvis Presley got his first guitar. The year was 1946 and his mother wanted to buy him a bicycle. But once they got here, Elvis decided he would rather have a gun. They compromised and the guitar was the final purchase. And what was Elvis's response to his mom's gift? Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. We are coming up on the cemetery here in town, Priceville Memorial Gardens. This headstone is dated in the mid 1800s, but check out the grave itself. It is above ground with bricks and leaves all over it. A lot of people do not realize that Elvis had a twin brother and there is a lot of speculation and debate on where the final resting place of the child is. If you go to Graceland in Memphis, there is a memorial next to the grave of Elvis and his parents, but his brother's body is not buried there. Right here next to his great aunt and great uncle is the unmarked gravestone. The date was January 8th, 1935, and at that time, the Presley family was so poor, they could not afford a casket and they had to put the child in a shoebox into the ground. When Elvis's mother died, Elvis had her placed in a tomb in Memphis, and then when Elvis died, he was put in that same spot. But grave robbers changed all that, and they moved the bodies to Graceland. And then when Elvis's father passed away, he was put at Graceland. But Elvis's brother is still right here in Tupelo. And even though there is no official reason for this, most say it is because the body really cannot be removed from the ground and transported at this point. As a child and as an adult, Elvis would return to the cemetery to pay his respects to the brother, and it always weighed heavy on his heart that his brother lost his life and he was still alive. There's a little hamburger joint here in town by the name of Johnny's Drive-In. He's shaking his hips. He's shaking his hips like Satan wants him to. It's currently closed, but they have a booth dedicated to the king himself and there's a photo just above where you can sit and it has him eating there eating a cheeseburger in that exact spot even though this is my birth town it has been five years since i've been here use your colombo like research skills and find the video i did of some of the elvis spots half a decade ago here we have some placards to both of the twins and it happened right here in this little teeny tiny house. A very modest home for the infant that would become the king of rock and roll. The family only lived here four years before the house was repossessed. This is a statue of what he would have looked like at age 13 when his family moved from Tupelo to Memphis. And apparently 13 year old Elvis is just about as tall as I am. You're either about to headbutt him or kiss him. Let me decide. This overlook of downtown and the church where Elvis sang as a young boy was one of his favorite spots. And they have commemorated this spot by erecting two statues, one of Elvis at the peak of his stardom and one in his youth with his very first guitar. Never forget your roots. 
I think that's what Elvis is trying to tell us. He has a lion necklace festooning his torso. That's the king right there. You know it's a small community when they have replaced the stoplights with stop signs. Still hanging from the sky though. And check this out. Old movie theater. Gotta love it. Pure Americana at its finest. And in the town square, the focal point is this majestic building, which I am assuming is the courthouse. And in front of it is this monument erected in 1908 by the Women's Christian Temperance Union in commemoration of statewide prohibition. At one point, they felt it necessary to decorate the bricks around this tree. And why they eventually got rid of the tree, I'm, I'm stumped. I wasn't gonna use that joke. I he, insist. There's a few old neon signs up and down the main drag. Jacob has this relic of Florida history in his van. It's the orange bird from Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom. And when you crossed over the state line into Florida, they would give you orange juice in these. I never knew that. And they have the old school looking McDonald's. I think it's a newer franchise building, but they took on the old school style. That's pretty cool. This is the North Mississippi Medical Center. And on August 10th, 1974, this guy right here was given birth to. In one of those very rooms right up there, I started my life. And in the 42 years on this planet, I've never returned to this property to see where I was born. It's a pretty crazy feeling. My dad tells the story that he was so happy after he saw me later that evening he ate an entire large pizza to celebrate. And I have continued that tradition. <laughs> Once a week or so, I will consume gargantuan amounts of pizza in honor of me being born. So my daughter was born, I just ate an entire ham by myself. So my dad ate a pizza, you ate a ham. When I have a child, what should I eat? What's the celebratory meal? for Adam's child. Just drink like 24 Mountain Dews. I like it. No freaking way. A bonanza still exists. I thought those closed decades ago. Off the side of the road, we've stumbled on this graveyard. The graves are so old, the headstones are propped up. They've taken cinder blocks, leaned them against it to keep it from falling to the ground. The date on this, 1852. Here's another one. They didn't die on the same day, but they died on the same year, and both of the children are buried in the spot. This one has completely fallen over. You can see where it was cracked from the base. 1862. Whoa. And there is a lot of red ants. A lot of these are in really bad shape. Back at the birthplace, I picked up a taking care of business keychain. I'm pretty excited about this. And now we have arrived at the Tupelo Automobile Museum. This is a pretty fantastic mailbox. It's like an old car. In 1911, this vehicle, according to the sign, was only $350. Isn't it fascinating to see how automobiles have changed, how they evolved? since the start until current day. There's even an entire section dedicated to Coca-Cola, the old truck, a Coca-Cola worker, a country store. She had her order delivered directly to her door. Not her house door, her car door. And amidst the paraphernalia of Coca-Cola persuasion, there is a metal tin, disgusting looking hamburger hanging on the wall there. Are you okay? I'm sorry, the hamburger cracked me up. You were saying it looks like a pile of dung. A, a pile of, of you know fecal what? material. Whoa, must be Burt Reynolds or something. <laughs> this is a 1946 milk truck. I think I'd be pretty happy if I saw that driving down the road delivering my milk. 
very cool looking. This must be something out of a fantasy story. Cars cannot really swim in water like that, can they? Wait a second. There's one in front of me. They do exist. This is a Camaro vet. There was only one of them made ever in existence in the year 1983. This car belonged to Liberace. And another fun fact is this was created by George Barrister out of Hollywood, California. Who also made the Batmobile. And if you look closely, kind of resembles that car just a little bit. Both of these vehicles belong to the legendary B.B. King. This is one of those rare occasions that you can find an automobile by the Tucker Corporation. The engine's in the back, the trunk is in the front, and in 2012, a similar one of these sold for $2.65 million. Oh, look at this. Thanks for letting me talk to you. I ha you haven't said anything yet. You're ending the conversation with a your closing remark. What's up with that? Thank you very much. Oh, well, you're welcome. But what are you thanking me for? I just want to look at your car. Hi, this is Elvis Presley. Yes, I know who you are. Can you please move out of the way so I can get a good shot of this vehicle? This guy just never- Thanks for letting me talk to you. Yes, I heard you the first time. I walked past this thing three times before realizing the posters spell out Elvis. Dun, 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 dun. It's Tire Man, Tire Man, it's Tire Man. Hello, Tire Man. A 30 foot tall gargantuan person made out of rubber tires. It's good to see you. Cows, all those cows down there. Just grazing and having a good day. I was just thinking as I stare at this road, this is a complete 180 degree difference of what the roads in Los Angeles look like right now. What's up, buddy? What's up? It's all right. It's all right. Stopped off the side of the road in Oxford, Mississippi, and whenever you travel around, you always see the world's largest things. World's largest chair, world's largest ball of twine. This place is known for the world's largest cedar bucket. I'm not gonna argue with this fact. Because who would say that this is not the world's largest cedar bucket? It's huge! I mean, I'm six foot three, but this thing's got to be at least seven feet tall. You gotta wonder, what's inside this thing? <laughs> there was actually a larger cedar bucket over in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and someone snuck in at night and burned it down. Who would want to harm a innocent bucket? There seems to be basically what looks like a bunch of leftover tubs. There's like hundreds of them out here. Ah, the water doesn't work. You ready to go, man? I guess. I was pretty comfortable in there, though. Do you remember the song, The Legend of Billy Joe by Bobby Gentry? The Tallahatchie Bridge? This is it right here. It crosses over the Tallahatchie River. I believe the original bridge that was here when the song was written was torn down and replaced with this newer one. Not really 100% how new it is. Because this does look kind of old. The song has been subject to a lot of interpretation on what the meaning behind the lyrics really are. And I'm starting to think if someone did jump off this bridge, the height of it, they could probably survive. Supposedly when the song gained all its popularity, they had to put a sign up saying anyone that jumped off for recreational purposes to swim in the water down below would be fined $100. That did not deter everyone, however, because this is the bridge that Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the hill at Bridge on Choctaw Ridge. The sign says Gurryville welcomes you. Some old fire trucks. Here's a steer. And look way off over there in the field. It's a dinosaur. There's a face in that tree, an old man. 
with a beard carved in the tree. Some cardboard cutouts of the pilgrims. He's just hanging out next to the cabin. Can you get a good shot of the dinosaur? I think so, I can see him. Oh yeah, there he is. Yeah, there's like a full-size dinosaur out there in the field. It's massive. And a lawnmower runs this train. I don't know the last time it was used, but it looks pretty awesome. I have to probably put this in my top 10 sunset category. I'm not taking a poll or anything or keeping a list, but if I had one, this one would certainly be in it. Look at that. It's beautiful.